the beautiful card. Look, the Amarok was not that successful when, in terms of um, functionality, but it was a status symbol, right? But we need a car that um, is going to take over the champ. Because, mm. like, Ian Zimbabwe had the wrestler, remember? Yes. yes, the Ford Bantam wrestler. The car was okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like Mazda should have actually made what, a, a successor for that car. They should same, yeah. same thing same with, thing. Um, with Nissan. They should make a successor for this car. Because mm. I've seen, now it makes sense. I was wondering why there's so many EP200 that's coming into Zimbabwe. Mm. It means, uh, <laughs> in a way, they're like kind of like dumping them here. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we welcome them because... Look, yep. they're quite strong and yeah. they, they, they do work for and us. And they're functional. Very functional. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Very functional. And we can't get away from the fact that you're getting a pickup, even though it's a half tonner, mm. for less than $20,000. Mm. That's big. Mm. When you look at fleet, right. which is the biggest consumer of these type of vehicles, yeah. you can easily buy 50 of these and put them in your fleet. And they'll be very versatile enough for someone to take home and use as a company car in inverted commas mm. and also be very functional when it comes to the work application. Exactly. These cars were purpose-built, I think, or really suit our applications here in Zimbabwe and in Africa as a whole. It's very sad to see it go away because there is no replacement yet. Mm. And that is what's odd for me. Yeah. Why why remove a good thing? Is it, is it, but does it make sense to have a, a Baki that's so little? Yes, a mini does. Baki? Yes, it does. Sometimes, you know, so everybody... So why is it only MP200 that's, that has a mini Baki? Um, well, they, they, they found the niche with that vehicle. Um, look at it this way. Let's talk about money. If you want to buy a standard size um, uh, pickup mm. or bucky, you're going to look at no less than about $28,000. And there is the MP200. It's smaller, yes, it's still mm. a pickup. Mm. It's still versatile. And think of, it, think of it this way. Who really carries a ton in their car mm. at any one given time? Mm. Here and there. Yeah. Here and there. Yeah, mm. unless it's cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that 500, 500 kilo payload in a smaller vehicle, that's economic, it's nice run around easy to maneuver, easy to take care of, very cheap to maintain, it makes it very attractive. NP200 being discontinued. I want to know from you, 0719194404, did you also see the purpose and the functionality of having an NP200? And do you still have one on the road? Now, coming back to Zimbabwe on more local industry news, government is moving to raise the minimum age wow. for combi and bus drivers in an effort to reduce traffic incidences as well as debts. Our government is planning to increase the minimum age for combi and bus drivers from 25 to 30 years old. This moves to ensure that only experienced and mature drivers are behind the wheel, tackling the issue of reckless driving that's been contributing to our country's alarming road traffic incidents. And I think they are quite scary. But do you think the minimum age of uh, our, our combi and bus drivers' age will definitely reduce traffic accidents and, and, and deaths? Ooh. Yeah. Let me throw this one to Lance <laughs> first. Okay, so um, look, um, it's there. It's in black and white. We're having problems on the roads, mm -hmm. and uh, Adam was This is what's up, and you know everyone's hustling. It's, it's becoming a busy town. I is slowly like merging into becoming like that metropolitan um, um, town. You know, mm -hmm. so yep. I feel like personally, this is my personal um, analysis of this. I feel like certain. Uh, weight of a, a public service vehicle, mm -hmm. like for instance, maybe a minibus or so, should be 30. Mm -hmm. Then for the bigger buses, yeah, let it be 35. Right. I, I mean, we, we all seen what's happening on the roads, um, the other tier road traffic accidents happening, negligence here and that. So, mm -hmm. apart from that, I would think that's a good move in line with improving the roads and the bus safety. Mm -hmm. And also, I think they're also going to implement, implement more things like maybe um, speed uh, limiters or yep. ETC. Mm -hmm. So Wait. I think personally, this yeah. will make or is a road to improving uh, the safety of the public. Yeah, so I was actually going to ask what are some of the additional measures we need to be thinking about yeah. mm -hmm. outside just saying, uh, mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. or, 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 or. So we also need a geolog, on, uh, a geolog or speed log on, on these cars. Like, um, checking systems that you know, actually limit the bus speed like a payload. I, I think it's possible. This is artificial intelligence we're talking about. Mm. Whereby if you're maybe seven miles the road, the speed limit is 80, 60, 80, yeah. urban, whatever. Your tracker and uh, limiter mm. limits the bus to that speed. Yeah, It's way overdue now. 0719 do you think government in implementing uh, and adjusting the age, the minimum age for combi and bus drivers 
will effectively reduce traffic accidents and fatalities on our roads 0719 what do you think is the root cause of reckless driving on our road because it's not just the combis and the bus drivers yeah so i think we have a problem especially in our bigger cities and that is probably where the, the shining beacon when it comes to this problem mm -hmm. i think it's monkey see monkey do people see other people doing it and getting away and it seems convenient or getting someone faster to where they need to go to mm. and we start to develop a very bad attitude or very bad behavior right. towards driving and respecting other people on the road mm -hmm. um it's good that the, they are raising the age of you know people in the public sector who drive people around mm -hmm. um in terms of drivers yeah. i think what's important is not the age itself is that allowing the person enough experience or time to become experienced to handle certain things on the road to become a better driver essentially but you can be a very good driver mm -hmm. but have very bad behaviors that have that you become accustomed to mm -hmm. and that have become somewhat of a norm which is unfortunately the biggest plague on our roads i think yeah. is our behavioral norms on the roads have gone quite poor yeah but what is that about and for me that's why i'm really trying to search right mm -hmm. right now the rate at which all of us can go through a red traffic light yeah, 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 yeah. you know what i mean or when it's like a, a turning you want to turn right in front of oncoming we are creating another non-existent yeah, exactly, turning yeah. lane yeah. you know we're doing the most on these roads so, yeah what i think um, why this is happening is by mm -hmm. enforcement side enforcement mm -hmm. so i think the therapy now with the traffic safety council of Zimbabwe, we need to come up with um, like if you go to england I'll, I'll drive this, 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 you know right, what I mean? Right. You get your ticket and it's hard on you. You know what I mean? It's yeah. hardcore. You get your ticket for violating maybe a red robot. It's actually a jail sentence, huh? yeah. and and suspended sentence, things like that. Mm. So now you can get your license revoked. It's risky because you know if you go to an intersection these days, even mm. if you're green, mm. you know the you moment you just want to. It's scary, look. you know. There's a moment, there's a time. Um, um, I won't say the road, but as I was entering, I was at the right of way, you know. Yeah. I'm checking my left side. I'm seeing <laughs> this bus. Like I, ah, uh, I think he did a change down here, like to increase speed. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and you know, it, it becomes a situation whereby you know, it's scary. Look, mm. and a lot of people are being, um, you know, injured. Yeah. 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 Like, so I think enforcement has to come through that uh, strong enforcement. Maybe bigger fines. Mm. You know, maybe PSV has this kind of fine. Yeah. Find them like the, the, what they call vicarious liability. Is it mm -hmm. maybe be find the owner yes. of the 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 the, 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 you of, know? the of the of the bus? Gotcha. And you, you make sure you enforce just like how it is when a minor, mm. like your child, does something. You know, the state actually does something to you as a parent. As a parent, and then you pounce your child harder. I think that's how it's supposed to be done. Oh seven one nine one hundred four zero four. What do you think is the root cause of the reckless driving on our roads? But also, do you think? The minimum age, raising the minimum age for our combi and bus drivers is an effective way to reduce road, uh, se uh, to reduce traffic accidents as well as deaths on our roads. 0719104404. Let's take a look at what's been happening in the tech world. Uh, Mercedes, 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 Mercedes. Yes. How many times did I say Mercedes? <laughs> Mercedes is not sleeping. They've gone and launched a new electric truck. Yes. So the E Actros, and I think the Actros here locally is known as probably the flagship truck to have uh, because of its horsepower, its pulling ability. It can go way beyond the 30 tons to some very abnormal loads it can carry and pull. Mm -hmm. So this truck, which is that uh, symbol of, oh, no, this is the flagship of an industry, has now brought an electronic, a fully electronic version of this vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, interesting news. This thing has been out in other countries. Um, and it also dovetails into other what other manufacturers have been doing right. in terms of going away from fossil fuels, mm -hmm. diesel. Um, we had Hyundai actually working with hydrogen mm -hmm. for their vehicles and mm -hmm. actually have test vehicles and vehicles that are working in South Korea mm -hmm. to try and get us off the reliability um, on, um, on fossil fuels, diesel. Mm -hmm. And now on the other side, electric cars are very popular with the smaller ones, mm -hmm. but now the big cars, the commercial vehicles are getting there. So we've got now Mercedes-Benz offering one of their key models as a full electric option. And it has been recently, two days ago actually, was launched in South Africa. Um, and it's a vehicle they'll be testing quite heavily there to see the feasibility and usability of this new technology. Yeah. We're not going to see this on the roads, I don't think, anytime soon. Mm. But it's also showing how serious the conversation about 
e technology is moving because it's getting mm. if it's going to commercial applications any idea what the key features of this truck are outside it being ev well um it's going to keep more or less the same standard features that they want in the, the comfort the driver ergonomics um it's reliability which is one of the key things mm -hmm. you can't get away from that yeah. and it's usability as well are probably going to be its key things in terms of the details i am still learning okay. i'll be very honest right. but uh for me the one thing that's going to stand out and be interesting is its actual range not the theoretical range which is what's usually marketed mm -hmm. and talked about which we all know is usually it's not nonsense, but yeah. you know it can only be achieved in certain situations. Yeah, real life application we, has a big bearing. It'll be very interesting to see how this EV will actually compare to the diesel truck in terms of the range. Are you able going? Are you able to go to Vic Falls for Marare exactly. on this EV truck? Yeah, because think about it, you think about a truck that's going to DRC today to take some kind of car from Zimbabwe. Right. You know. It's very, let's say that car is working flawlessly is, 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 and, it, and there's no mechanical issues with it. Mm. The driver just has to worry about fueling up. Mm. And you can measure that and you can calculate that to a T. And if there's any emergencies, you can always do this and this and this. Yeah. Now take that away. You know, that now needs a different kind of thinking for these long haul drivers. And that's an interesting conversation to have and see how that works. Coming up next, we're going to be taking a look into... Um, which car is better? Last week it was the Suzuki Swift that yeah. took the car home. Well, this was week. Rigging there. <laughs> <laughs> As always. Yeah. And this week it's going to be standing up against the Datsun Go 2014 to 2018 yeah. model. Yeah. And we're going to see how well that one is going. So, who's Datsun? Who is Suzuki? Your uh, Datsun, Datsun Go. Yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to be taking uh, a look into that. But Lance, what's your feeling about this uh, uh, Mercedes truck coming in? Any feelings there? Yeah, um, look, like I said that um, I'm a patriot, uh, or should I say a, a fuel aid, right? Mm -hmm. We all um, are shining against uh, these electric vehicles, but from a business uh, perspective, it's going to make sense. So imagine now, let's say they don't have a long range mm -hmm. of trucks. If you're running your company, uh, a trucking company, you can just maybe buy four or five or even ten uh, electric trucks and they do the local uh, service rounds. Mm -hmm. And the diesel ones do the, the you know, the Vic 4s, the DRC and stuff. Right. You're going to start making, because look, cell phones used to have big, big batteries. Mm -hmm. Now they have small batteries and they've got better life, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think eventually uh, we're going to have long range batteries, yeah. compact long range batteries and stuff. So, yeah, let's just, we need to adopt these. Yeah. Things. All I right. Like, I like the point that Lance has grown, grown on, like about the smaller shorter distances mm. so the, that's called the final mile deliveries mm. and yeah you know what that will actually bring a very interesting case for electric trucks yeah because that will definitely bring down the bill mm. in terms of because where do trucks consume the most fuel yeah. in heavy traffic gotcha so, no, so before we get into our mechanical issue for this week lance what's the zim classic car of the week so lance will give us um key things about a classic car that we've loved in our country <laughs> you get to come through and let us know what that car is last week it was the Peugeot 404 and you came in guns blazing you knew what that is lance give us some tips some hints as to which zim classic car we're looking at this week so a hint, uh, it's the biggest hint. It's um, it's the predecessor to one of the cars that we we're, we're gonna review mm -hmm. today, the Datsun Go. Okay. Right. So that's the hint. Mm -hmm. And uh, this car uh, was a very fuel efficient and economical car. Mm -hmm. right, with, with the carburetor. With the carburetor. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, it had a station wagon, a variant, mm -hmm. and it had uh, a sedan. And uh, most importantly, it also shared uh, some of the drive line with. The champ. Mm -hmm. So it was a very popular car here locally. Okay, oh seven one nine one out of four zero four. Can you guess which Zim classic car Lance has just described? Oh seven one nine one hundred four zero four. We're going to be looking at our mechanical issue for the day. It is winter time, mm -hmm. and that means you may or may not have some challenges with your battery. We're going to share with you some tips, uh, staying ahead of the cold. Zimbabwe tobacco industry leaders, financial institutions, tobacco farmers, NGOs, as well as all stakeholders invested in the future of the golden leaf. Join us on the 7th of June 2024 at the Rainbow Towers in Harare for a groundbreaking Zimbabwe's Business Weekly Tobacco Conference. The conference presents a chance to unlock the potential of Zimbabwe's tobacco industry and will be tackling the critical issues of financing, exploring innovative solutions that empower our farmers 
strengthen the local economy through beneficiation and value addition and promote sustainable practices. Imagine a future where profitability meets responsibility. At the Tobago Conference, we will chart a course to get us there. Be ready to be part of the change. For partnership and registration details, you can reach out directly to our team, Martin, on 0772-651-852, Bendiwe on 0773-216-457, or Lin on 0783-776-832. Don't miss this opportunity. Join the Zim Papers Business Weekly Tobacco Conference on June 7th and be part of shaping a brighter future for Zimbabwe's tobacco industry. It continues to beat louder, stronger, and further. According to the Zimbabwe All Media Product Survey, ZAMS, Kabi Talk 100.4 FM is the third most listened to urban radio station in Harare and the fifth most listened to in Zimbabwe, making it the first ever provincial radio station to achieve this. Thank you for your continued support. Kabi Talk 100.4 FM, we are Harare's Heartbeat. And so we're asking the question, do you think raising minimum age for combi drivers and bus drivers is truly an effective way to reduce death rates and accidents on our roads? 0719100404. But also, what do you think is the root cause of the reckless driving that we see on our roads? Not just from the combi drivers, but all of us, all of us are guilty <laughs> of breaking road rules. What is that about? 0719100404. Um, so last week we were looking at um, oils. We were looking at oils and viscosity. And we were learning some interesting things. Um, do you remember how to check for your oil viscosity? Which is your recommended oil for your car? And why are you using 5W40 versus 5W35? And one of the things that Lance was speaking to last week was the idea that sometimes you must let your car warm up a little bit idle for about three to five minutes before you start your car. Now, we are in winter season. I'm sure for all of us getting up in the morning, it might be a bit of a drag. I know for me, it certainly is because my chill got you. Yeah. <laughs> but also, interestingly, when we're talking about a uh, drop in temperatures, battery issues also come up. Lance, talk to us. What's, what's the connection between okay. weather temperatures and your battery performance? So, I think um, most people have heard the term cold start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially with the diesel uh, engines and stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, cold start is in um, a delay to start, or when it does start, it runs in a funny way, right? Okay. So when the temperatures start dropping, especially Kuma AM, uh, most cars, um, the, if you even touch the engine block, you'd be surprised at the temperatures there. Mm. So when you're starting the engine, when you're cranking the car, it takes longer to start than when it is in summer. So what that does, it, 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 it wears out your battery quicker than in summertime. So you notice uh, most, if you notice that um, during winter, prices of batteries actually will go up. Oh, <laughs> it's very clever. <laughs> yes. it's, so, it's, it's, yeah, so yeah, it's a trend. Um, oh. So yeah, so it's, 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 it's something that you never run away from. Mm -hmm. um, modern cars are actually better, but um, like with the diesels, it is what we call heating. You see that um, coil on your dashboard, it's called preheating mm -hmm. uh, with the diesel cars and also the petrol cars. Some take longer to start, right? Right, so yeah, this is where what we're going to talk about now is going to help us, okay? Uh -huh. All right, so, so, so again, why is that important? I think it's just say, but that's right, we'll be having charge, but the engine takes longer to start, right? So, it's the engine exactly, it's a setup that you have. So, now the starter motor is one of the, um, the biggest um, devices on your car mm -hmm. that draws current, right. Uh, at that time. That's why it, when you crank your car, um, that sound like that. Mm -hmm. It's actually drawing quite a lot of current from the battery. So the more current that's drawn from the battery is the more damage that comes in the battery in the long run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This uh, in like simpler terms. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So so how do we safeguard against this? Uh, to be honest, um, cold start is always going to be cold start. Mm -hmm. So suggestions that we give to our customers um, from 
you know, uh, from our side is towards winter, like now, it's better to invest in a battery. So we are worth a bit cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. And you get a fresh battery. Mm -hmm. That way you can go through the winter. And also, you need to get your car checked. Um, some of the delays are actually mechanical. Mm -hmm. um, maybe your filters are clogged. Your e filters are clogged. Your heater plugs are not working. Mm -hmm. Spark plugs, etc. etc. Yeah. So all those things are the things that you need to look into before um, you go into your winter. I'd imagine, you know, in Zimbabwe, mm. we, we don't have like below zero degrees. Exactly. Also. We don't have any freezing. Mm. But I'd imagine there may be like electrolytes in the battery that could actually freeze. Exactly. That's had we those temperatures. Yeah. We, that's why you see there's actually other types of batteries that we're going to discuss later on uh, when we're comparing the two types of batteries. Uh, mm. Yeah. Lucky, we're here. We've got a better uh, environment or weather. Mm -hmm. That's why we're not really susceptible or exposed to what these batteries can do, you know. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it's something that we can never run away from. Okay. Yeah. So in terms of the types of batteries, talk to us about the okay. their uh, types of so batteries. Basically, people just know that there's a standard battery yeah. and there's the maintenance-free battery. But, uh, you know, it's just... There's a maintenance-free battery? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a what? A maintenance-free battery. What? What's, what's a maintenance-free battery? It's a battery, but you just buy, you put it in your car. When the time is up, you just take it out, you throw it away. Then there's other batteries which have got um, openable uh, caps where you can actually top up your acid and distilled water and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are the two types of batteries. So now, so which one are we mainly using? Here in Zimbabwe, uh, we're using the standard battery, the, the acid type battery. Right. But the basic, the maintenance free battery, most of them are actually lead type of batteries. Uh, and some have got lithium as well. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is where we need to really do our research again. Like I said that time, always do research on what your car needs or what you have in your car. Mm -hmm. It helps you in the long run. Okay, got you. In terms of EVs, Taf, talk to us about the battery. What does that look like? Yeah. As well, far as you can tell from the... Well, the battery, again, is all uh, derived from lithium base, a lithium base as well. Mm -hmm. um, but let's talk about the winter and how it affects that battery. So there's no secret here. Cold weather affects the, how the amount of charge the battery can hold. Mm -hmm. So EVs actually run a shorter range when the climate is colder mm. and they actually do better when the weather warms up a bit but don't do as well when the weather gets too hot mm. so it's a fine balance but winter definitely retards in fact um, it's not just you know your, your electric vehicles just any battery in general rechargeable battery for even your remote for your tv at home mm. you tend to find that challenges tend to present themselves when it gets a bit colder Gosh. so yeah batteries and weather there is a link. <laughs> That's one way. <laughs> That's another way. Um, I think if you notice the uh, European vehicles, if you look at um, when it's hot in October, that blanket won't work because it's actually not making the battery irritate. Right. You get it. So all these things, those, you need to consider these fundamentals when you're doing or buying a car. Yeah. yeah it's it's sounding as if not making, um, not having a, an active manufacturing industry is actually a downside for us, right? Because we are always having to adapt and adjust our cars exactly. from where they came from, yeah. and then knowing yeah. how to correctly adjust. Exactly. It's true because uh, we're not really getting a car that's meant for us. And now with us importing cars as well, we're importing cars for the looks and you know prestige mm. and stuff and stuff. Of course. So it's it's really getting you know it yeah. hits your pockets in the long run. All right. So yeah. which of those two batteries do you recommend we invest in? Uh, on the local market, uh, first and foremost, before you buy a battery, it's, it's, we recommend that you buy a battery from a reputable company. Mm -hmm. You get your warranty, right? And also before the battery is installed on your car, they do a basic check on your car. Because remember, the battery is used up in a car and there's a device that charges the battery in the vehicle. Mm. So all those things need to be working pro perfectly for you to have a, you know, a good relation between car and battery. Mm -hmm. you know? So first you need to get your car checked, right? So from that now, I would personally uh, suggest a maintenance fee battery for most of the people who are not hands-on. Mm -hmm. uh, Got you. Yeah. Got you. And are they winter batteries? No, I don't think a battery in winter. Not really. What we talk about is the cranking current of the battery, or the, the, how can I put it, a cranking current of a battery, or the amount of charge that a battery can hold. Right. So that is determined by the type of car and manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, um, so the battery tends to cover your winter and summer. Because mm. usually the life summer of a battery is usually one year, two years. Yeah. So you really can't say I've got a winter battery. You know, so manufacturers actually try to make a balance on that. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So how do you know that your battery is starting to give you problems because of winter are there warning signs 
um, of winter hurting the back. So, yeah, uh, it's just not winter. It's just um, a normal check that I've, I've noticed, right? So, yeah, people listen carefully to this now. Mm -hmm. So, a basic test that I do, or that most people should do, mm -hmm. is in the night, switch on all your lights, your heater, as it's every, all the devices, switch them on, and um, make, make your car idle. Right, mm -hmm. maybe idle for a minute or so. Mm -hmm. When you rev a car, your car, but if the lights um, increase on their brightness, it's a sign that your battery is on its way out. Because mm -hmm. it's not holding the surcharge that's needed for the vehicle to run. Yes, right. the alternator is charging, but your battery also needs to hold a charge. Right, mm -hmm. first one. Number two, um, you, when your car starts having a slower crank, cranking speed than normal. Mm -hmm. These are the things that you need to listen to. So what's yeah. a, what does a slower Cranking speed sound like. Uh, should I do it? <laughs> you know, so you can actually tell the starter speed. You know, you, you you know your car. If you use your car daily, right? Yeah. There's a time it will go like, ying, 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 and it barely starts. All right. And it does start. Get your it car. Was yeah. Exactly. So we've got this issue, situation where we just ah, I don't want to move and this also. And usually when it's warmer, it starts. But ah, but not the pinta pinta baby. I think I am a quick quick. I think I am a right? And also check um. If you've got a liquid type of battery, you also need to get your battery checked on the battery water uh, and the indicator. There's usually indicators on the newer batteries, the mm -hmm. red, uh, white, and, 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 and red, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and green. These indicators also tell you... On the your, battery? Yeah, on your on battery. On the battery? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the local batteries, I've noticed the local um, companies, uh, the batteries now have those indicators on. So it helps us uh, with that as well, right? Having any problems with your car battery, let us know on 0719-100404. We'll try to help you troubleshoot what is going on. So any other tips that you have for us, TAF or Lance, as yeah. far as the battery is concerned? I think for me, and one thing I've always noticed being in the industry, is that people don't take note of how old their battery is. Mm -hmm. And then start to complain when it starts to give you issues. Lance pointed out perfectly, your, your average lifetime for a battery it's about two, two and a half years mm -hmm. of when it's going, things start going bad. Take note of that and then take advantage of buying your battery when it's a bit cheaper. Mm -hmm. Don't wait for winter. Mm -hmm. When one, it will be an inconvenience, two, it will cost you more. Mm -hmm. So just be wary of how old your battery is. After about two years, you know, if you're lucky, it will last a bit longer. Mm -hmm. But after two years, just keep it in your mind that, ah, my battery might need to be replaced. Is it possible that the car might be causing charging issues to the battery and not the battery itself. Yeah. It's very, very, very possible. She's thinking she's thinking about it. Right. So basic uh, anatomy or the basic buildup of a car, mm -hmm. you've got your engine, you've got your battery. Mm -hmm. So you, the battery, uh, first job, initial, is to start the engine, right? Now when it starts the engine, the engine and the battery start helping each other to provide power for the accessories in the car. Right. You've got your heaters, you've got your wipers, lights, everything, right? So what then happens is what we call an alternator, right? Uh, the alternator it runs off the engine, mm -hmm. the kinetic energy from the engine. This alternator usually, usually car batteries are 12 volts, right? They're rated 12 volts. So your alternator sometimes uh, ranges from what? From 40 to 12 volts. Mm -hmm. So as time went on, uh, manufacturers are now putting regulators on, intelligent regulators on the alternator. Where it senses it, does the battery need charge? It takes charge. That's less fuel used. So that unit needs to be uh, serviced or um, inspected okay. if it's charging or well. so a basic test is just buying um even you you, you go lucky you can buy yourself a test meter mm -hmm. uh, if you go to any hardware you find that maybe a chinese uh, test meter you just put on your two poles whilst, whilst your car is running mm -hmm. if the charge is above 12 volts then you know it's charging if it's below 12 volts then you know the car is doing current it's a basic got you. test yeah got you and do we get charged for these battery inspections um, some uh, recently, I went to a local for a company. I bought a battery, but before they just tested. Uh, they've got units that actually test the drain of the battery. Right. Right. So they'll tell you, I ah, know your battery is it, your alpha mm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And when we you, you said the main function of a battery is to start a car. So mm -hmm. does that mean you can use any kind of battery to start a car? No. There are solar batteries, for example. Ah, uh, no, you can't. Uh, solar batteries are, are deep cycle batteries. So they are slightly more expensive because they've got a lot of lead inside and, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're beefier. Now, the car automotive battery is meant for the car, right? So what you then need to do is just look at your car rating or the supplier of the battery will give you the rated uh, battery for your car. Mm -hmm. So they can, if they give you the rated battery for the car, that's when they'll give you the warranty according to the demand of your car. Because you can't take, okay, so if, for instance, what we call a 622 battery, mm -hmm. 631. Mm -hmm. 628. 628, exactly, 628. Uh, so the 628 is a more common battery uh, for the modern car. Mm -hmm. 
because it looks like a, a 622 but it's, it's 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 got a compact fitting for the european standard uh, cars right. so it's got the same cranking current as the 622 but the different comes in the shape mm -hmm. you know so now you can't use a battery from a 323 on a, a diesel mercedes mm. initially to start mm. the car but mm. the cranking current the small battery won't be able to hold the cranking current and the accessories that the car has right yeah is there such a thing as too much current yes it is you can so, you yeah, so you, how they make it now, it's big, so it won't fit in where you know a battery will go in. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, uh, all right, we're learning a lot this morning about battery maintenance as far as winter is concerned. Let us know if you have any questions as far as the battery is concerned. Coming up next, we want to find out which car is taking the cup home. Is it the <laughs> Suzuki Swift or yeah. is the Datsun Go? But let's just go through some of the reasons why. I think also it's important to raise the age limit, but also why we are reckless on the roads. Uh, Sadat, good morning. How are you? Driver age limit is fine in one sense, but we need a more realistic approach to prevent road traffic accidents, including proper navigation, navigable uh, road network, traffic lights, traffic lights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Enforcement. The major problem is the macroeconomic conditions that have prevailed for years now. Mm -hmm have affected people negatively with a dog-eat-dog -dog culture. Every person to their own. This manifests in the way we drive and necessarily causing congestion. I get what he's saying. Traffic light, because I shandepo kasa zampurisa. To no sunga hana epopaya, because everybody just wants to go. Or even if it's working. Even when it's working, right? Today, I don't know what's going on. Sisiki. Ah, it's bad. So, so this listener is saying, Is it, is it fair? It's just a mindset that we're having because uh, coming from where yeah. lads i don't know it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a it's a cancer it's growing and you know it's actually we, before we know it i don't be <laughs> won't be able to drive properly because yeah. you know you actually think twice to go into town in a cbt and you know it's 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 <laughs> Admire, good morning. Lifting the age limit for combi and bus drivers. I think you mean raising the age limit, right? Isn't the solution. Road rules and regulations are not adhered to properly. Admire, that's what we're asking. Why? Why are we not adhering to those road rules? And of course, the car. Um, a couple of answers have come in. 0717 has come yeah. in. 4520 has come in. Mm -hmm. 5311, people break road rules because the responsible authorities aren't enforcing road rules. Instead, the road has become a hassle to them mm -hmm. to the point of you refusing promotions, Fabasa. Eish, this one is loaded. So no one <laughs> respects the law when they can't get away with breaking it or just pay a small gift. This is coming from Tonde. I hear what Tonde is saying there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it feels as if the enforcers themselves are drinking tea with the mm -hmm. criminals. But, yeah, and but, you can't discipline someone that you've been charity begins, canoodling with. Charity begins at home. Mm -hmm. Just having good ethics yourself. Yep. You know, changes a lot. You know, because they don't need to be there mm -hmm. if we like just follow the rules. Yeah. It's, it's funny how in South Africa, uh, road rules are actually observed eh? when there's no uh, when the power is out you know it's yeah. three cars in three cars from your lane three cars from that and they observe that you know right right and do we have that in our road uh, rules i don't think we have that <laughs> because i think at that time we uh, never anticipated traffic lights would never work yeah, so we yeah. never actually came up with rules yeah. and regulations in india mm -hmm. they, i did not see a single traffic light by the way but, they're still regulating but they still there is no traffic light there's mm -hmm. no jam there's mm -hmm. no accidents mm -hmm. Everybody and yeah, yeah, but yeah. somehow everybody just knows okay, it's your turn, it's my turn, it's your turn, and it's my turn. So it's a mindset like we're talking about. Yeah. We just need to have a culture whereby we just improve ourselves, you know. It's, yeah. it's and it's I'm sorry to say this, but the more you drive into the CBD and the southern suburbs, this is the the more hey, that these things so come not as good winter is the only good. in the north. I would, I would argue and take it one step further <laughs> the more we drive in Arari, yeah. you go elsewhere, Mutare. Yeah, yeah. Organized. Yeah. It's organized. Yeah. The, the, even everyone knows the rules. Mm. Everyone follows it. Mm. But once we come to Harare, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Harare <laughs> and and south from what land? <laughs> Eunice, good morning. Eunice is asking if a vehicle is popular, why do manufacturers discontinue making it? Isn't it the essence? Isn't the, is the essence of a car in its looks or mainly about its efficiency and function? I think it's a combination of everything. Yeah, yeah, it is. And even in um, modern like um, ISO standards, huh? mm -hmm. certain things are now being absolute, you know. Yeah. So for you to invest, so the Nokia thirty to ten. Yes. Yeah. So for it's you to invest uh, another ten billion in developing a car similar to what you have, 
You know, number is super sad. I got to look at today. And I also have to take the business stance as well. That factory that's producing these vehicles that are popular can be used to produce something else or be made more efficient mm -hmm. to so that so that the company makes more money with this another line. That could be also another reason. All right, so we've got eight minutes left. Let's go to, I will tell you what the Zim Classic car is in a second. Um, let's go to our car review, the Datsun Go versus Suzuki Swift, both from 2014, 2018, but also from our highway code. I did not forget. Oh. What <laughs> is your traffic sign for uh, a narrow grid road ahead? 0719104. Can you describe what your narrow grid sign looks like according to the highway code let's get on to um our car review so today it's the that's the that sun go launched uh the update version was launched in 2019 uh it's probably been th this one has been the biggest facelift that this hatchback has had since mm -hmm. its introduction in 2013. Yes. um let's talk about its cargo capacity yes so Lance is looking very confident today, yes. and I will try my best to beat him, but the cargo pack capacity is 265 litres, okay. which is identical to the Suzuki Swift. Okay. That's why he said it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so so nobody's know. taking this one. Body yeah. style, it's both the hatchbacks. Both the hatchbacks, yeah. yeah. Got you. Transmission. Uh, transmission, uh, there's manual, and there's uh, the automatic uh, gearbox on, on the Swift. Um, I noticed that the, the goal is with the five-speed manual as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the CVT gearbox. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, yeah, it could be neck or neck, but um, I've got one <laughs> thing under my... Okay, let's see, it. let's see. <laughs> so now, what Sorry. Suzuki did, they contracted Aysen to make the, the gearbox. Oh. So Aysen is actually... What does that mean? It's a company. It's so just like saying there's Aysen, there's Getrack, there's ZDF gearbox. Mm -hmm. So Aysen is a Japanese uh, company. Right. It's actually... It's actually Doing quite good. Okay. Yeah, so so is, is this making the gearbox any better? It's actually quite reliable. For the goal. Yeah. Okay. For, for the Suzuki. I'm too Suzuki. Oh, you're Suzuki? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. Lance went and upped his game this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at the drivetrain. <laughs> Okay, so drive train. Our Suzuki is also front wheel and front -wheel all-wheel drive. drive. Yep, mm -hmm. and all-wheel drive. I'm not sure about that. He, so that's where he might win a little bit <laughs> all-wheel drive. Uh, mine's just a front wheel drive, only yeah. uh, two wheel only. Okay, got you. And in terms of top speed? Uh, no, top, yeah, top speed. Yeah, the funny thing is, um, the, the Suzuki is rated 170 kilometers per hour. Mm -hmm. Yep, and the that's on go. And both these cars, I must stress, I, I'm surprised people go this fast. 150 kilometers per hour. So wow, the, that's pretty good. quick. Yeah. Have yeah. we tested this? I, I would that. not try. <laughs> I would not try. <laughs> Sheesh. Yeah, especially with the go, no parara. No, 150 k's. There'll be nothing left of you. <laughs> Pick up your eye, your ear, your, your tongue. <laughs> and in terms of the, the engine review, talk to us about what the Suz, that that's on go is doing. You know what? Mm. I've actually driven this car mm. uh, a little bit, quite often. Mm. And I'll give you the review from my own personal opinion okay. and from what the internet says. Right. It's good. It's capable. Mm -hmm. uh, it's fully efficient, very smooth, and surprisingly um, well, very reliable. Mm. But I think the smoothness is what comes out for me. And that's also been the same reviews I found online, that it's for a small engine. It is remarkably smooth. And that's what, that's what everybody comes back to. Yeah. <laughs> it's a three cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> I was hiding behind the other cylinders. But, yeah. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> but, uh, sorry, that like, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. So, but now the Suzuki's got a, a wider range of engines now. Yes. Apparently, the Jetson has got one engine mm. 1.2 litre, three, three cylinder. cylinder. Mm. The Suzuki's got them, you know. A uh, myriad. Exactly. So, so they, they take it there. a powertrain uh, for the Suzuki. We did this one last week. Uh, look, um,. Personally, I would personally feel like uh, Suzuki's got a better upper hand here because yeah? mm. Datsun was focusing on one thing here yeah? and um, there is economy and practicality. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Suzuki, gotcha. yeah. So Suzuki takes this one. Yeah. Uh, so far, we're winning. The torque? <laughs> Suzuki, I'm guessing. Uh, the torque for this 104 uh, newton meters of torque, okay. 51 kilowatts. <laughs> uh, this is 68, 68 horsepower. It's a small engine it's coming engine. from a three cylinder. <laughs> Why would they give it the name Go if it's not going to actually it's going. go? <laughs> it's going. How it drives and the figures are different. Okay, it, yeah. <laughs> In terms of 0 to 100, how quickly does the Go get? It goes a very slow 13.8 uh, uh, seconds to get to 100k. <laughs> this is really not going in. Uh, yeah, the Suzuki is 11 seconds. Huh? 
<laughs> Suzuki yeah. interior. Let's talk about how the go. Yeah. I don't like how the go looks on the inside. It's terrible. It's a practically basic. minded vehicle. It's a yeah. very basic. It could be vehicle. practical and attractive. They had to figure out how to put a steering wheel and seats inside a box. <laughs> so uh, it's not. It's not known for its interior. Yeah. In terms of comfort, how would you describe the comfort of the? Yeah. Surprisingly good, except for the bench seat. Mm. It is good. Um, like I said, I've driven this vehicle. It is very out of five, comfortable. What would you give it for it? I would give it a six and a half out of ten. Six and a half. Which Suzuki, is good. what would you give? Uh, I can't put Suzuki's age because look, that that's in there is just a cool car, and he enjoyed it because he's used to driving those Mercedes. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't even better now when I go. You can feel it. You can put a waffle. And in the it. ride and drive. <laughs> <laughs> the ride and drive. How would you describe the ride and drive? Ah, uh, the ride. The, the ride is comfortable and composed. Mm. I would say it is average to towards good. Okay. Yeah, Suzuki, 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 Suzuki. Japanese people. Eh, they're good. But you can't compare it to uh, the other cars that it's pitting against. Uh, mm -hmm. But this is a go. I take it's this. It's winning. Yeah. 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 I don't even think there's any point in going further. Yeah. Fuel yeah. tank capacity of the go? Uh, 35 liters. Yeah, Suzuki 37. <laughs> <laughs> and mileage, how many k's per liter is the go doing? Uh, it does a very respectable 19 to the liter. Oh, fine. <laughs> Um, yeah. And yeah. so it looks like for this week again, Suzuki Swift. <laughs> I'll be back on next week. <laughs> that sun go. Let's week. see what next week we'll be reviewing. Um, uh, uh, Lance, I was yes. going to call you Philip, yeah. which is true, your name. Yeah. <laughs> So, Zim Classica, what was the Zim Classica you described? Uh, it's a Datsun 120Y. And that's quite correct yeah. because um, 4520 Simba Sox came through. It says, that car, I learned to drive it when I was 13 years old. It became yeah. the spare forgotten car But then when parents moved on to bigger, <laughs> better. Yes, yeah, so, I just helped myself, it yeah, said. Yeah. Datsun 120Y or Datsun 140Y is yeah. what mm -hmm. someone else also yeah. said. Yep. Same thing. Um, it's the same thing. Mm. Um, Anzi, hi guys. Is the Subaru Impreza hatchback worthy to buy a uh, particular in Zim? Can we do this one next week, Tonda? Only because of time. Mm -hmm. Zero eight five zero Jikanzi. I see this unbox it. No, yeah, it wasn't. No. And for our highway code, the sign, I asked you, what does the symbol um, for narrow grid looks like? It's a triangle, a red triangle at the top, and then your usual yellow rectangle written narrow grid and with that under the hood we're done we have an event coming up Lance, yeah, can you tell us um, about that so tomorrow the team bmw uh the great to Inyanga. yes yeah for the weekend team bmw, team BMW. what are you going to be doing in Yanga? just to, to go speed man. how do we join just to go speed man um this, this, on social media the, um the, the, the flyers are there i urge people to come quickly give us your number we have to go uh, to 775 get in touch with me now link you with the guys. I'll hook you up. <laughs> and inquiries at moko.co.za. We'll also put the details on our Facebook page. We're also live on our Facebook page. Until next week, Under the Hood is done. Thank you. Cheers.